it's a special report because we are still lining up the 40, 50 different articles, documents, video. This is the embryonic beginnings of InfoWars Nightly News. And it's a crash course in brain surgery. We've got TV people that have worked nationally, locally, you name it. But we're just basically right now testing out what we're going to put in the soup. And that's what's happening uh, here tonight. But I have a full transmission against tyranny lined up for you coming up in what? 15, 20 minutes, guys? Now, it is 7.04. Is that an atomic clock I've got in here? Is it 7.04 Central Time? Now 7.05, so we are live here tonight. Thank you for watching. Um, we've got a big, big news show lined up for you this evening, and I will attempt as best I can to uh, remain calm. We're going to look at uh, BBC, speechless as traitor tells truth, the collapse is coming, and Goldman Sachs rules the world. Um, since we reported on this yesterday, at InfoWars.com, California school districts are having to admit, well, it's not the law you take vaccines, but we're still going to lie to you and tell you it is. Uh, that is coming up tonight. And we're also going to look at uh, Fukushima. Bloomberg, Fukushima desolation, worse since Nagasaki as residents flee. And, you know, the, the issue I'm not too happy about is... We're having radioactive isotopes rain down on us in North America because, see, there's a thing called the Pacific Ocean right here. And over here on the side of it is Japan. And the trade winds, and above those, the jet stream blow this way. And we're right here, just four or 5,000 miles away, right here. And so it blows over. And when the radioactive isotopes readings went off the chart in the last six months, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration came out and said, you know what, we're just going to raise the level of radioactive isotopes and we're just going to say all this is safe. So that's coming up tonight. Now, something I won't have time to cover in the official hard-hitting InfoWars Nightly News coming up in a few minutes uh, is this little baby. And as of an hour ago, it was still up on Drudge. Perhaps we should put a news website up on that uh, monitor over there and go to drudgereport.com. And over on the right-hand side, there's a red link, or it was a red link earlier, uh, that has the headline uh, from infowars.com. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter if that monitor's way across the room. We can, we can still tell a photo over there. We've got what it takes. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama speech. Now, tomorrow night, it's a 99% chance. We're actually kind of late tonight because I'm always obsessing on information instead of actually presenting it. I remembered when I saw this article, Rick Perry about two months ago in Los Angeles speaking to a Hispanic Christian prayer group. And he got up there and did the worst Southern Californian immigrant uh, accent I've ever heard. It was, uh, well, I can't even do it, and I'm good at accents. I can't do it because it didn't sound, it didn't even sound like somebody from Mexico. But uh, it was basically like, I am Rick Perry, good to see you. Yes, I am your friend. I love Jesus, Jesus as well. And so... I spent about 30 minutes today with Dude before the show trying to find that. I wanted that tonight. We couldn't find it. But if you are able to find it, Dude, what's your email? Rob D, just R-O-B-D at Infowars.com. I guess, I guess Dude isn't in there. Oh, there he is in the giant control room, bigger than the studio. I was out of town the week they built this. So. <laughs> but... Um, None of the crew's fault, though. It's, it's, it's the person that did it's no longer here. But side issue. It's good to have a Star Destroyer bridge-level control room. Marcos, you like it, don't you? It's awesome. Anyways, um, 
I'm not in a good mood tonight because of this news. So I was trying to find this Rick Perry clip because I saw the clip two months ago. I heard 590 AM play the thing at nauseam. And I said, okay, at least I can find the clip of Hillary in Kentucky going, long time ago, I was down here doing a redneck imitation that I is, is 10 times what they do in Kentucky. And we were able to find that clip. And, and, and you're saying, what are you talking about, Alex? There's all this important news. The point is, politicians, for whatever reason, if, they, if a politician goes up to the North Pole and finds some Eskimos or Inuits, I would imagine they check with a linguist to try to get the cadence of their talk. That's always insulting to me. If somebody flies down here from New York and tells me, do you like to ride horses? And you wear big straw hats because you're a dumb Texan. I'm like, no, I'm just an, an American, a human. I'm, I'm, you know, we actually have buildings here and computers. And I've, I've met a lot of folks from New York who are great people, but they they show up and they think that tumbleweeds are blowing by and all this is going on. But to make a long story short, tomorrow night we've got Hillary doing her Kentucky imitation to a group of Kentuckians. I mean, I would find it insulting. To go speak to a group of Africans or Kentuckians, Appalachians, uh, Germans, Chinese, and go, well, since I'm here at the Chinese University to speak on economics, let me now talk to you like this. Ah, oh, hello, good to see you. Ah, oh, tan, 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 tan. I mean, that's basically what it is. So, so tomorrow night, we've got politicians going, tan, 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 tan. We've got that coming up, and we've got Hillary to a group of what she thinks are evil Appalachian Kentucky and rednecks going, Got to say who I am here. I am from Kentucky. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. And I'm trying to find Rick Perry going, it, well, I have to get into that character. How do you do that? Because he didn't do a good one. It was like a... My name is Lopo Gonzalez, and my cousin says... I mean, it is literally that bad. I couldn't find that one yet. But I do have Barack Obama. And that's the issue. The Associated Press, globalist, New World Order, they admit they even have computers transcribing speeches, and I'm sure the computer did this. But here's the headline that Drudge has. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama's speech. And they say they, they drop the G's. And so Obama, by the way, linguists have praised him for this. When he gets up before a black audience, this is a guy whose dad reportedly was like maybe, maybe 25% African. So, so whatever. He's got some African heritage. Great. G wonderful. I don't care. I'm way beyond race and all this stuff. That's not what this show's about. But you've got a guy who basically speaks like a cultured Harvard you know, trendy, liberal, know-it-all with a perfect white affect, which I find obnoxious because I can hardly talk, you know, my trendy. But Obama, every time he gets up in front of a black audience, I mean, he'll be like, I was rolling. But, well, I mean, I can't even do the accent. It's, uh, we're going to play the clip tomorrow night. But uh, he does what you would call kind of that cool southern black accent, authoritative. I mean, it's, it's a nice accent. I like it. But the point is, when he gets in front of black audiences, he does this accent. Just like Hillary gets up and goes, I wear a straw hat, I'm from Kentucky. Or Rick Perry gets up and says, oh, hello, I am from Mexico. I mean, it's ridiculous. But how does MSNBC respond to this? They come out and play the race card and actually attack the Associated Press who is as dry as it gets and says they're racist because they actually quoted Obama in kind of the black dialect that in linguist training at major universities, I know because I took a semester of it, is an admitted language. The point is, these politicians are going in and for whatever reason they've been told, speak in the dialect of the group you're talking to, it's more effective. I don't agree with that. I've got family 
who, when they're talking to a black person, will try to talk like what they think a black person talks like. Or when they talk to Hispanic people that speak better English than I do, they'll go like, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. I mean, for me personally, it makes me absolutely cringe. I'm going to talk at you like I talk with information. I'm not going to sit there. But the point is, the politicians manufacture this garbage where they basically do what I've seen other people do. I've seen folks that run into a Japanese person or something like, How are you doing well? All good for you. Would you like chopstick? The point is, it is a condescending thing, which says to somebody, I'm not interested in what you think or actually believe in and who you are and what you stand for. I am going to obsess over what type of accent people that look like you in some stereotype might have. Now, this is quite a buildup to where I'm going because I'm sick of political correctness. I don't care what religion you are, what color you are, any of it, as long as you will leave my guns alone and my private property, and my family. If you'll stay out of my business, I love you. I want you to be free. I want you to be rich. I believe in prosperity. I believe in a win-win-win-win-win scenario, not a some-got-to-lose-for-some-got-to-gain system. And you've been watching for 15 minutes. You're going, where is he going with this? I'm going to this place with it, okay? Drudge Report is linked to our article. We're getting the drudge love, as we do many days a week now. And here's Paul Watson's headline, AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama speech. And it says MSNBC has yet again played the race card to demonize not even criticism, but merely unsympathetic portrayal of Barack Obama as racist after AP writer was lambasted for accurately transcribing Obama's Black Caucus speech. During the speech, Obama attempted to fool the black audience into thinking he was one of them and not a paid teleprompter reader for Wall Street by dropping the G's at the end of his words. I mean, this is like CIA anthropology, sociology, how to manipulate. And he gets up there and basically speaks in like a southern black accent like Martin Luther King. And the point is, he doesn't talk like this normally. I mean, for me, that would be very insulting if I was black and a guy who doesn't talk like, quote, a black person does, some stereotype, got up. I mean, if the guy spoke with that stereotype and that was his accent, I'd be like, well, this is great. But if a guy got up that talked one way to one audience and another way to another audience, I'd be insulted. I mean, all I want is what is authentic. I mean, who are these people that spend all their time being inauthentic? So the Associated Press, we're going to play these clips tomorrow night, along with Hillary and the rest of them, with all this fake garbage, comes out and engages in this spin that it is racist to actually print what Obama said. You're supposed to play along. In fact, MSNBC points out other outlets transcribed it and cut out the ghetto talk. The issue isn't that the AP transcribed it correctly. The issue is, why is Obama engaging in abonics when that isn't how he normally talked? Here's another article out of Ocala.com in the U.S., Patrons mistake ice cream shop mascot for KKK robes. And it, interestingly, Diaz, who was from Puerto Rico, had never heard of the KKK before, this controversy. She can't even quite get her tongue around the name, referring to the white supremacist group as the Ku Ku Klan, without any hint of irony. And there's an image of it. It's a person in a giant chest-down sugar cone with a vanilla cone over the head with sprinkles. And it turns out there was a near riot when people thought it was a Ku Klux Klan person. This is what I mean. Obama has said that they are going to use race as their issue. Well, what else do they have? Obama's paid for by offshore banks. Raping is just like George W. Bush. Everybody, no matter what color you are or religion, is being screwed by this. Our country is falling apart, 
And Obama says, I'm going to make this about racial politics. So, of course, they've got MSNBC, owned by General Electric, the big bomb makers, out there pushing racial division in the name of fighting it to get us all at each other's throats for quoting Obama accurately. Well, my ancestors, some of them come from Kentucky and then Tennessee to Texas. Tomorrow night when I play Hillary, doing some weird, to the power of 10, fake Kentucky redneck hillbilly voice, I'm not bashing white hillbillies. I'm showing Hillary acting like a two-faced fool. I mean, if we could find the Perry clip, I know it's out there, we couldn't find it today, of him talking in some weird Spanish-Mexican accent, it's not about Hispanics, it's about Rick Perry being a fake. And it's the same thing with Obama. What is he doing in front of a black audience suddenly talking like he's a gangbanger? It's an insult to black people. You do have the KKK ice cream cone guy? Okay, go ahead and play it then. There he is. I mean, this is pure evil, ladies and gentlemen. This person from Puerto Rico doesn't even know what the KKK is. And it was reportedly people were freaking out. Because the mainstream media is telling you there's Ku Klux Klan people under every single table. In fact, hold on a minute. Is there one under here? Is there one under there? I mean, look, the system is throwing everything at us they got. It's Goldman Sachs. It's the big mega banks. That's who's screwing us. And the system wants to make it a racial or religious issue. I don't care what color you are. You're being screwed by these globalists who are the biggest welfare recipients in the world. They're the ones bankrupting us. Are we ready to go to the nightly news? Are you ready for me to go to break and come back and refocus and give folks the news? You know, I'll tell you something. Just, just, just put the Al-Qaeda cream guy up. No, it's not racist cream. It's Al-Qaeda cream. There's nothing more terrifying than a Puerto Rican in an ice cream cone. <laughs> and it's in the news that people were panicking. They thought there was a, a Ku Klux Klan invasion. <laughs> How could anybody drive by that guy and think it was a Ku Klux Klan person? I have seen that in Austin, people dressed up in ice cream cones. That's like a $100 suit you can buy. It's like the guy's twirling signs to come look at real estate or come to their steakhouse. God, a steak sounds good right now, doesn't it? Oh, my God. I, the idiocy of this. I saw another report today about all the racial conflict in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, if white people go and kill some black guy, it's not going to help any of us. If black people come, come kill some white guy, it's not going to help us. If black folks lynch some Puerto Rican because he's wearing an ice cream coat, and they think it's the Klan, it's, a, it's not the real threat. It's like this terrorism thing. You've got a better chance of being killed by a honeybee or by a dog attack or by hundreds of different things than, you do, but, than being killed by a terrorist. Why are we talking about giving up all of our liberties and all of our freedoms because of some imaginary terror threat? I mean, it is literally an exercise in fear-mongering. My God, it's admitted in vaccine inserts that tens of thousands a year, more like 50,000 a year, have adverse reactions and that hundreds die from vaccines. And I've seen these scientists get up and say, well, that's a cost. It's good to pay to eradicate these diseases. But it's destroying our immune system. The vaccines are full of garbage. I remember seven years ago, the EPA, no, it was the FDA, legalized spraying a live virus on all meat cutlets, like bologna, hot dogs, you name it, so that they don't have to keep it clean or keep it refrigerated. Nothing will grow on it because they spray a virus that kills bacteria. And then there's all these links to Crohn's and other bowel diseases because we're eating stuff. Well, I can't just say that. Uh, Google uh, uh, FDA approves flesh. Uh, no. Food and Drug Administration approves virus that kills bacteria or virus that. No, 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 no. The exact headline. Food and Drug Administration approves spraying viruses on meat. And the point is, since then, it's been proven these are linked to all these bowel disorders. 
because it attacks your body as well. So instead of selling you good, clean meat that wasn't rotten, they just approved radiating it and spraying viruses on it. Yeah, there it is. Let's uh, move that over so folks can see it. Viral meat spray, advancing food safety, 2006. And uh, it goes into how they did since approved that. Okay, that's it. Look, don't worry about viral meat spray. The real thing to be afraid of is an imaginary guy with a turban on his shed, or even more deadly, a guy wearing an ice cream cone outfit from Puerto Rico. I mean, that, that, that is horrifying. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it. You drive by some brown guy wearing an ice cream outfit, and people are like, ah, the Klan, they're coming to get us. Again, the wicked flee when none pursue. Stop being afraid of BS. Become aware and take action against the real tyrants. We're going to go to the intro right now, get my news articles together, and I will present to you InfoWars Nightly News coming up.